I went to moveon.org, and I went through about, I think, seven or eight pages. <laughs> right, to find and I it. I couldn't find because there's so many other petitions. Because there's so many other petitions. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, go to the website, www.accesstucson.org, yeah. mm -hmm. and you should find it there. Right. Well, okay. I found it because you sent an email. Right. And right. so it made it easy for me, and it told me how to go. So that's another way. If you go to the page, send it to a friend. Mm -hmm. So yes. I shipped it to all my friends and said, go here, and I copied exactly what you gave me, mm -hmm. and then, uh, so I mm -hmm. hope that I've been some help in that, oh, yeah. because Good. that's the way I did it. <laughs> well, also, uh, there is a notice in the Tucson Weekly this week. Um, I, I should say, this show is being live on May 2nd. The reason I mention that is because it's going to have a number of replays in other weeks. So. Um, the one for May 1st, which is when the officially weekly comes, Tucson Weekly comes out. If you look in the City Week and then you look on the bulletin board and you look down in the regular listings uh, under W for World Harmony Can It Happen, which is a series, you'll see this listed, but, and it will end with the, uh, the, uh, the link, actually. Uh, assuming it's, it's on the online edition. I haven't checked the print edition yet, but it's online. So the, the TucsonWeekly.com if you're going to go on the Tucson Weekly. Um, also, I want to let you know how to reach us at World Harmony Can It Happen, and we'll be showing it on the screen in just a few moments. Uh, there it is. Uh, you can either uh, call 520-722-2837, as you see on the screen, or you can send an email to forward to fulfillment at yahoo.com. Now, I will caution you, if you misspell with one letter, <laughs> and I have, <laughs> sending something to myself, if you leave out the R, which I have done, or if you put an extra L in there, uh, after f the, the full, f it's F-U-L, one L, F-I-L, two Ls, uh, it won't get to us. So be careful with your spelling, but we'll be glad to get your comments, your program ideas, suggestions, whatever you'd uh, like to share with us. Okay. Yes, one thing I'd like to add about the subject matter you brought up is that, uh, you know, J.T. Waldron, Sound and Fury, he's a graduate of, of this program, and he's gone on to be a very successful film producer, and he's done several different documentaries, and of course he worked with us on making the movie Fatally Flawed, oh, yeah. which was about the election systems. Oh, yeah. And you know, many times I'd turn on the Access Channel, and there it was, and I just mm -hmm. knew that the, the <laughs> bureaucracy and the corruption that goes on in our government would see that and go, oh my God, why do they have to launder all this stuff out? I mean, they're showing exactly how we steal elections, uh, some of the idiot things that we say or do, and and uh, uh, that you could see that over those years, because you know, this is 10 years I've been doing this, yeah. is that you can see that every year, you know, this place has been cut back, cut back, and uh, reduced and crippled, and yeah. now they're coming in to get the kill. Mm -hmm. You know, mainly also yeah. because you got that train track out front here, you know. Property values have gone way up. Uh, oh, you're talking got, about the trolley. Oh, the trolley. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is location, location, location. Yeah. But on the other hand, you, do, you don't take a facility like this and say, oh, we're going to evict you. And by the way, you can take all the stuff in the building and move it somewhere else. Well, it costs thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to set up a facility like this. Like in this room alone, what is there, like 40 or 50 lights up on the ceiling? You got uh, cameras, three different cameras working. I think it's less, but it may seem that way because the brightness. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you, you look at that uh, electric panel over there. It's just, a, it's an incredible system, and it's, 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 it's so important to preserve because you know, uh, we need our voice. We need to be able to get people informed and it's getting harder and harder and we're being more and more isolated and that the only way that I can get media out is if I buy commercial time or, uh, uh, you know, let's face it, I mean, you know, uh, money is speech and that's a sad thing and it's a sad commentary well, about the, this country the, now. The Supreme Court said it, Yeah. but that doesn't mean we have to buy it. That's right, we don't. Because I never saw a, 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 a dollar bill open its mouth, exactly. which it doesn't even have. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I mean, the Supreme Court at one time uh, uh, was okay with slavery, and mm -hmm. it, isn't, it isn't okay. No, exactly. And just because the Supreme Court says it, mm -hmm. they're not God. They may be our Supreme Court, and I do respect them, but I don't necessarily respect them backing slavery, which is mm -hmm. wrong. Or backing uh, uh, this, this, all this money is speech thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, we're not getting enough people saying that the city council used to meet four times a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that when they had a consent agenda, they were smaller, and that they had time to review each line item. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't have time for that now. They have meeting twice a month. It used to be that at least we'd have an hour per meeting that people could come to the council and speak. Yeah. That's cut down to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And now they pull you out of a list. Yeah, and, and Martha, they decide who's going to come uh, on. Yeah, at and at the last time, meeting, she was she was put off to. Two weeks later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and what they do is they look at your names. And I told Stuart, I said, you know what's interesting? My name is kind of different, Martha Dominguez. I had called the mayor's office in the morning about access to some. Oh. And I said, I really think that this community resource is a value to you. Mm -hmm. You just don't comprehend the value. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you about it. I said, just education alone, we are reproducing democracy every time we train a person, mm -hmm. every time someone comes to a program to learn video production, and like you said, mm -hmm. how to produce films. You cannot just make that happen. You have to have a community effort like Tucson Media Access, mm -hmm. and I said, and also, I don't think that that building should be sold, it should be kept there mm -hmm. for an umbrella for supportive media. I said, because it is, you may not think it's historic, I said, but there is history with that building, oh, yeah. and not only that, it has the spirit of democracy within it mm -hmm. because of the work that Access Tucson mm -hmm. is doing. John, I didn't know the maker of that movie had started at Access Tucson. Yeah, he did. That was very interesting. And you were one of the stars in that movie. Well, I would say I was one of the play people who worked hard to get it out. And, well, uh, but you were yeah. one of the stars. But, I, 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 I'm fortunate to work with some really great people. I mean, Bill Reisner, uh, I'm a better person because I know him. Well, but you also are, you have greatness within you too. Thank you. In fact, the whole panel, Absolutely. I think, has greatness in, in them. Uh, it's interesting that uh, he came to one of the election integrity shows we did, and he asked for your copy of the video, and I gave it to yes. him, and he put part of that in, yeah, in, 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 the, in the film. Absolutely. So I had a minor role, yeah. in a sense, but, <laughs> but you had a major role. <laughs> well, you're asking the right questions. Well, a lot of times the media does not because like I said, uh, the media in this town, if you look at like, for example, Andrea Kelly, I mean, you know, she used to be with the Arizona Daily Star. I worked with her for a number of years trying to get the story at elections, but it was only Huckleberry's story that got out. Mm -hmm. And you know, she did a good job. She got promoted. The people mm -hmm. who criticized Huckleberry in the media, the people who were holding him accountable, where are they now? They're gone. What I don't get, what I don't get is that, that supposedly the reason we're being cut is because they, the, the city wants to save money. But, but that's got to be not so because the whole setup of Access Tucson was based on creating Access Tucson because of the right of way mm -hmm. that was given to the cables for the cable company and for years. I paid, and every other subscriber had to pay what they call a PEG charge, PEG, right. 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 uh, public access. It, it was not a lot of money, but collectively it was. Mm -hmm. Several million dollars worth mm -hmm. a yeah, year. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we started, Access Tucson started with over a million dollar budget. Uh, more recently, it was about 300,000, mm -hmm. a little bit over that, I think. And now the city manager, since then, wants to turn it to zero. Mm. And yet, the cable company still has access to the cable Mm -hmm. area. Now they're not collecting the peg fee anymore, but they still have the, the, the right of way for those cables. Mm -hmm. I, I, it seems incredible that they can... Uh, uh, Julie, you said mm -hmm. it looks like you wanted to say something about that. Oh, um, I was just saying this is something that's happening all around the country too, and there are very few of these um, peg-generated community access channels left. Um, because communities back in the 70s and 80s when cable systems were being granted basically monopolies, um, it was recognized that the community had an interest in having a voice. Um, that, for whatever reason, isn't seen as a community value across the country. I think that's sad. I think the fact that Access Tucson has stayed alive so long 
says something about our community and the fact that we do value that and makes it more imperative that we not lose it. We've got Access Tucson, we've got completely independent, we have KXCI. We're a community that does want to be heard. We, we're, we've always been a very, very diverse community. Um, for as long as I've been living here, grew up here, you could start a conversation with anyone from a lawyer to a U of A professor to a homeless guy on the corner and pretty much everybody was valued at the, at the table. That's starting to change and it changes mm -hmm. from above. It changes from these attitudes mm -hmm. and values and where our money goes, what our civic decisions are. And we've got to speak up and say that doesn't reflect us. That's not who Tucson is. Uh, by the way, I, I think that I may have uh, put the link on my Facebook account um, and my LinkedIn account. I have, uh, if you go to Stuart Thomas, uh, I understand there's more than one Stuart Thomas, so <laughs> you want to, the one in Tucson. Um, you should see the link. If you don't, just send me a message and I'll, I'll, I'll get the information to you. Uh, but I, I believe it's on my LinkedIn account and also my, uh, my Facebook account. It really is a matter of priorities. Wait a minute. You know where it is? <laughs> I, I believe it's on the, um, oh, God, it's the, uh, oh, it's the um, Blog for Arizona oh, yes. mm -hmm. uh, website. Okay, I submitted it there and someone uh, put it on there. I believe it's there, Blog for Arizona. Uh, and, and then look, look for the listing of tonight's program. Mm -hmm. I, it should be there. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? I was just saying it's a matter of priorities as to where the money goes because $303,500 is not a tremendous That's sum right. of money in the overall scheme of things for the city of Tucson. And we all know through all the consultants and <laughs> Uh, you, you can name any number of ways in which we all know some tax dollars are wasted. Here we're not even talking about tax dollars. We're talking yeah. about cable franchise yeah. dollars. Yeah. And it, I can only hope and I think we can all expect that our mayor and council will see the way forward to do the reasonable thing in the best interest of Tucson so. and the residents of our community, all of Pima County actually and uh, get it right because it's ridiculous otherwise. Anything that's reasonable and logical can't just go by the wayside and I think we'll be able to count on them but I think we each have individual and collective responsibility to write letters, make phone calls, tell everybody Absolutely. we know, keep referring more people. They're having a public hearing next week on the overall budget so not just on Access Tucson, and it is such a small portion. And of course, it's, it, the money goes from the cable companies, from the cable franchise fees to the city. So it's not as though it's we're- It's not a tax dollar. Right, we're it's not, it's not even, fee. but the city then keeps track of that money with Access Tucson, and Access yeah. Tucson accounts for it extremely well. The way things are managed here is incredible. It's absolutely remarkable, the talent that exists here at Access Tucson. Yeah, that is amazing. When I was in a city council meeting recently, there was a fellow who talked about his experience, uh, and I don't remember the details of it. Does anyone, I mean, he started just basically learning from Access Tucson, and he's grown a business which was very mm -hmm. admirable to mm -hmm. hear, and he said it in front of the city council. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the details, but it was very impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, the, 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 the thing is that this budget, I would encourage people to go see the general budget, mm -hmm. like you say, which you need to put that date out so people can attend, because there is waste, there is money for consultants and, and for mm -hmm. other things. So what has happened is that when I talk to several of the city councils, mm -hmm. the one thing that they paid attention to was the fact that I asked the question, you know, how could the city, when this money is supposed to be going for yeah. community access, mm -hmm. why did it all of a sudden disappear? Do you not think that was a decision for the mm -hmm. city to take their money and then to allow the cable company to behind closed doors without any input from us, the citizens. And so 
there is a complication here that um, they're saying there's no money available, but actually I think uh, it was a choice that